We have a water crisis in this country. And I'm not talking about Flint, Michigan, the water crisis that's in the news all the time. I'm talking about a crisis that has all but been ignored and is much bigger than this. It's in our communities, in our homes, where we work, it's in our schools. And we are just now starting to understand the depth of this crisis. If you or your children are drinking water at a building that was constructed before 1986 and no one has replaced the pipes, the solder or the faucets, chances are you're drinking water with high levels of lead. Northeastern cities like Philadelphia, New York, Wilmington or Newark are busting with those older buildings, which is why the problem is such a concern in our area. Let me give you a short list of some of the health problems associated with lead in the water, according to the World Health Association. High levels of lead can cause damage to the reproductive, nervous systems, and to the kidneys. It is linked to anemia and high blood pressure. It is especially dangerous for fetuses and young children and can cause learning disability, behavioral problems, and mental illness. The EPA says that Pennsylvania has the biggest problem in the country with unsafe levels of lead in the water in daycares and schools. Recent test results from schools in the Newark, New Jersey school system exposed a major problem there. Same thing with Jersey City. But you know what's a bigger problem? The fact that there's no federal law, there's no state laws in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, or Delaware that require testing in the schools for unsafe levels of lead. The school districts are basically on their own, and that's a problem. Water testing labs have been sending back results to school districts for two decades, telling them they have unsafe levels of lead, and the school districts have just shelved the results. Why? It's too expensive. That's why. In the Newark School District, for instance, the mayor now says it will cost a billion dollars to fix the problem, and that doesn't include the expected lawsuits. Now, there are a few school districts across the country that have been proactive in dealing with lead. New York, Los Angeles, Madison, Wisconsin, just to name a few. But it is infuriating that so many school superintendents, legislators, mayors, and governors have known about this problem for years and have chosen to ignore it in the dangerous delusion that it will just go away, or more likely, that the next guy could handle it. Simply for the sake of saving some money, they have gambled with our health and our children's lives in a sick game of water roulette. The only good news is that the problems found with high lead in Flint, Michigan has raised awareness and has pushed states to finally do something. There are several bills now winding their way through the legislative process and should be law within the next year. But if you're a parent, what do you do if you send your children to school in one of those old buildings and you don't know if they've been fixed? Well, at my home, we've been sending our two boys to school with bottled water until we can be assured that the water there is safe. You know, there are still people out there right now who are saying we can't afford to fix this problem. Those people must not have children and possibly don't even have souls because I think the answer is so obvious. How can we afford not to? I'm Larry Menti. We'll see you next week.